time to talk about China's Type 039A and B attack submarines, designated by NATO as the Yuan class. They are conventionally powered diesel submarines, although they are equipped with air independence propulsion, or shortly AIP. This technology enables the boats to remain underwater potentially for weeks. Now, the Type 039A Yuan class has been around for a long time. But reliable analysis in the English language on the topic has been lacking. Many articles use unreliable data and bad judgments when it comes to the Type 039A. This video aims to shed light on the capability and the intended missions of the Yuan class and debunk some of the common misconceptions about the class. We will first cover the background to this very important submarine class for the Chinese, before moving on to discussing its purpose. The Type 039A is the successor to the Type 039 submarines, the Song class, which are the first modern diesel attack sub built in China. The Type 039A's existence was first discovered in mid-2004, when a photograph of the completed submarine at China's Wuhan shipyard was published on a Chinese website. The Wuhan shipyard, located in the middle Yangtze River, is responsible for building the vast majority of the country's diesel submarines, including the Type 039, Type 035, and the earlier Type 033 diesel-electric submarines for the PLA Navy. The first Type 039A completed sea trials in 2005 and was commissioned in 2006. The second boat was said to have been launched in December 2004. The Yuan class attack submarine is part of a more general Chinese naval buildup. With the risk of conflict over Taiwan and the South China Sea always present, the PLA Navy has invested heavily in both the quality and quantity of diesel submarines, with the intention of using them as part of its active defense of the near seas and its anti-access and area denial strategy in the far seas. By 2013, production of the previous generation Type 039 Song class has stopped and the Wuhan submarine yard shifted entirely to the production of the Type 039A and B Yuan class. The Type 039A's design appears to be derived from a combination of the Song class and also the Kilo class, purchased from Russia throughout the 1990s and early 2000s. The PLAN has inducted two of the original Kilo Project 877 and 10 of the improved Kilo class Project 636. The Type 039A has many of the defining features of the Kilo, including the teardrop hull with the raised hump on the top, the raised deck, the high freeboard, and what is believed to be a large reserve buoyancy a similarly shaped bow, and the same torpedo tube disposition. At the same time, it has from the Type 039G Song class, the same propeller layout, diving planes, general stern section, and sail. The Type 039A is fitted with an Air Independence Propulsion AIP system, developed by the number 711 Research Institutes of the China Shipbuilding Industry Corporation. The Type 039A is using an AIP engine of what is believed to be 100 kilowatts in power, and is probably equipped with two such engines. In comparison, the pioneering Swedish Gotland class uses two Stirling AIP engines rated at 75 kilowatts each. The larger Yuan class obviously needs more powerful AIP units to get the same amount of mileage. The Type 039A is integrated with advanced noise reduction techniques, including refined anechoic tiles active noise cancellation, asymmetrical seven-bladed skewed propeller, and domestically made shock absorbers. 
Consequently, the Type 039A is one of the quietest submarines in service and very difficult to track. In 2021, a new variant of the Yuan class was spotted in Wuhan, featuring a stealthy design for the sail, which will reduce the radar cross section of the boat while surfaced. This variant is named the Type 039C. In total, somewhere between 20 to 26 Type 039A, B and C are believed to be available, with the majority of these being the improved 039B variant. They are believed to be around 6 Type 039C launched so far, although not all of them have entered service. More units are expected to be built over the coming years, replacing the older Type 035 submarines that have been gradually phased out. Now time to clear up some common misunderstandings about the Type 039A that is somewhat prevalent in the defence community, especially in the West and especially in the English-speaking media. An influential article published by the US Naval Institute in 2015 is full of these very common misunderstandings. The piece was written by someone named Henry Host. So what did he get wrong? Firstly, the author claimed that the Type 039A to be a very small submarine built primarily for coastal waters. The author compared the size between the Type 039A and the Japanese Soyu class. According to the article, quote, the PLAN designed the Yuan to be a small, quiet, slow-moving, anti-surface warfare platform. Japan's Soyu class SSK provides an ideal contrast with the Yuan. The Soyu is 84 meters long, with a draft of 10.3 meters, a beam or width of 9.1 meters. Comparatively, the Type 039A is far smaller than the Soyu. The draft for the Type 039A is 4.3 meters shorter, the length around 10 meters less, and 0.7 meters thinner in width. Water pressure and hydrodynamic drag place a premium on submarine internal volume, increasing an SSK's capabilities such as magazine, depth, range, stealth or speed, for example, no doubt has an upward spiraling effect on platform size. Likewise, shrinking a submarine size would put substantial downward pressure on every onboard system. Make no mistake, the Yuan's designers accepted capability reductions in various areas in order to maintain a small size. The Yuan's small profile takes a new significance when compared to its non-air-independent propulsion AIP-equipped predecessor, China's Song-class SSK. The AIP-equipped Yuan and the non-AIP Song have extremely analogous dimensions." Unquote. There are many problems with this assessment, namely it is made on inaccurate data. The available information states clearly the draft of the Soyu, or the height from waterline, is only 8.4 meters, less than the 10.5 meters claimed by the article. It is also unbelievable that Chinese naval architects can take a submarine the same size as the preceding Song class and simply squeeze in an additional AIP system as the author claimed while maintaining the same level of armament and sonar systems. Submarines are already very compact by design and severely limited in internal space. Space on the submarine is at a premium. We have internal footages of the Song class, and they show the boats to be as cramped as one would expect. It is inconceivable to magically find the extra space to put the AIP system, which requires space for bulky things like engines and oxygen tanks. 
no matter what kinds of trade-offs can plausibly be made in elder areas. Authoritative estimates put the displacement for the Type 039A Yuan class at around 3,600 tons submerged. Substantially greater than the 2,250 tons estimated for the Type 039 Song class. In fact, this is only slightly less than the 4,100 tons displacement of the Soyu class. So, contrary to the USNI article, the Type 039A is a large conventional submarine, not a small one. It is certainly much bigger than the Song, and only slightly smaller than the Soyu. The next wrong claim by the article of Henry Host is that the Yuan class is primarily geared at coastal defense in shallow waters. I quote, The Yuan's small size enables it to take fuller advantage of the shallow littorals that pepper the area around Taiwan and the South China Sea. The PLAN certainly has accurate surveys of China's local ocean floor geography, water temperature trends, and reef locations. PLAN submarine captains are undoubtedly adept at negotiating these features. The Yuan's small size allows it to maneuver more easily within shallow and confined littoral regions. Given that SSKs do not have the speed and the longevity to evade quickly once detected, the Yuan's terrain accessibility is a critical part of its survivability and operational ability. Nuclear attack submarines like the US Virginia class operate with greater difficulty in this type of terrain. Shallow terrain partially limits the SSN's primary advantage. Diving deep at high speeds after firing and thereby evading detection. Furthermore, maritime geography may limit larger submarines' physical maneuverability. A Chinese submarine captain could take advantage of the Yuan's shallow draft and wedge the SSK into a difficult to access channel or maritime feature, and thereby forcing higher technology SSNs to fight on unfavorable terrain whose geography and acoustic signature favor the defender." Unquote. Well, we have already established that the Type 039A is a large submarine, not a small one. So the purported advantage it may have in shallow waters over nuclear submarines is not quite as big as the article argued. Still, I would agree the Yuan is a fairly suitable submarine for places like the South China Sea, where there are waters that are sufficiently shallow for a diesel boat to be advantageous. Although for very shallow waters like the Taiwan Strait, Possibly not. A small midget submarine could be more suitable. More problematically, if the Type 039A is meant to operate near the coast and within range of friendly bases and ports, why would it require AIP? Why would it need the capability to operate for weeks without having to surface? If this is a coastal defense boat, there will be places where it can surface safely, and it could potentially finish a patrol without having to surface at all, simply returning to a port or a naval base after a few days. The fact the Chinese Navy puts AIP on the Yuan suggests it is intended for operations further away from the coast, possibly east of Taiwan, and possibly all the way up to Guam. Secondly, most of the Yuan class from the Type 039B subclass onwards come with a pair of low-frequency flank array sonars, the HSQG-207 sonar system. These are passive sonars, or more specifically, a line of hydrophones, intended for detecting noisy surface warships at long range.
Low frequency passive sonars work best in deeper waters further away from the coast, where there are less background noise, for example from marine traffic and biological sources, and less interference with the bottom. This type of sonar system should perform very poorly in very shallow waters, offering very little benefit. The fact the Type 039B is outfitted with passive flank array sonars reinforce the likelihood it is intended for operations in the deep waters east of Taiwan, potentially for intercepting any US naval forces seeking to reinforce the island. This is consistent with the large size and the AIP system of the Yuan class. Another, even more ridiculous claim made by the article published by the US Naval Institute is that the Type 039A uses anti-ship cruise missiles as the main weapon, rather than torpedoes. Here's the relevant quote. The Yuan was designed primarily as an anti-ship cruise missile platform. The Yuan does not need to catch up with fast-moving surface warships in order to threaten them. The C-802 anti-ship cruise missile has a range of 180 kilometers. The Yuan is also able to use the PLA's new supersonic ASCM, the YJ-18. The YJ-18 has been described as having a cruise range of 180 kilometers at Mach 0.4 and a sprint range of 40 kilometers at Mach 2.5 to 3.0. The Pentagon's most recent Chinese military capability report places the maximum range of the YJ-18 at 250 nautical miles. Anti-ship cruise missiles free captains from spending crucial electrical reserves in attempts to maneuver into torpedo range. The U-6 torpedo range is estimated at 45 kilometers after which the Yuan could potentially be left with little power left. Furthermore, the crew proficiency needed to excel in cruise missile-based anti-surface warfare is less than needed when prioritizing torpedo use. The latter requires complex maneuvering based on imperfect information, all the while leaving the very littoral areas that partially shield them from higher technology SSNs. The Yuan was designed to be a small, cost-minimizing, quiet ASCM platform intended to excel at anti-surface warfare." End quote. In my opinion, the conclusion is wrong on so many levels. The only thing I would agree is that the Type 039A is no doubt a potent anti-ship platform. No doubt about that. However, the torpedo will remain its main weapon. The USNI article demonstrated very limited understanding of Chinese submarine weapons. The C-802 can be fired from a surface warship, aircraft, or from land, but cannot be launched from a submarine. The Karet subsonic missile that can be fired from the Type 039A's torpedo tubes is the YJ-82 submarine-launched cruise missile. The YJ-82 certainly does not have the range of 180 kilometers claimed by the article. Rather, it is far smaller. I don't have the exact numbers, but 180 is certainly too high. Generally speaking, submarine-launched anti-ship missiles that are fired from a torpedo tube have a far smaller range than the version used by naval warships. This is true of the American Harpoon and the French Exocet. This means that the range advantage from using torpedo tube-fired anti-ship cruise missiles asserted by the article is actually quite small. Firing a cruise missile even from 50 kilometers away will carry a high risk of detection. Furthermore, missiles fired from torpedo tubes can only be launched in small numbers, due to the limited number of torpedo tubes putting a limitation on salvo size, 
and the small number of missiles carried by the submarine. The Type 039A with six torpedo tubes cannot fire more than six anti-ship missiles at any one time, and doing so is already highly risky, because it would leave the Type 039A defenseless against enemy submarines that may appear. While the YJ-18 is indeed a dangerous anti-ship missile, Small numbers of this weapon is probably insufficient to penetrate the air defense of modern naval warships, or indeed a group of warships. Sheer number of missiles are needed to saturate modern air defense systems. The only way to launch large numbers of anti-ship missiles from a submarine in a short period of time is through the use of vertical launch systems, or VLS. Large nuclear attack submarines, like the Virginia class, contain a dozen VLS cells to fire cruise missiles, like the Tomahawk. VLS provides the potential to actually overwhelm modern air defenses. Only by possessing a VLS can a submarine really use cruise missiles as the primary weapon, rather than torpedoes. The Type 039A does not have a VLS. Therefore, the U-6 and the U-9 heavy torpedoes will remain its main weapon, with the anti-ship missile as a secondary weapon. In short, the article published by the USNI critiqued in this video is for the most part pretty damn wrong about the Type 039A Yuan class. Now, there are many Western experts who are very well informed about the Chinese Navy, including its submarine forces. People like Leo Goldstein are great sources on the PLAN. However, this particular article is not well informed, and it serves as a reminder that when it comes to any sources on the Chinese Navy, caution is advised. It is good to be skeptical by default. The Yuan class is not a small diesel submarine intended for coastal defense, and its cruise missile capability is secondary to the torpedo, which remains its primary weapon. Rather, the Yuan is meant for deeper waters, further away from the coast, for operating away from friendly bases, and for combat duties in deep waters. Its AIP system, long-range passive sonars, and large displacements all point to a blue water mission profile. It seems likely to be deployed in the waters between Taiwan and Guam. As part of China's area denial strategy, its active defense against adversaries from the other side of the ocean. The predecessor to the Type 039A, the Type 039 Song class, is a very able diesel submarine in its own right. In October 2006, a Song class submarine surfaced right next to a US aircraft carrier, the Kitty Hawk, well within firing range of torpedoes before being detected. You will see a video on the story of the Song and the Kitty Hawk on your screen right about now.